Welcome back to another episode of Your Photo Hour Look. My name is Matt Klaskowski over at On One Photos. And uh, if you want to find out what the heck this is all about, just go to ononephotos.com. Go to videos, your photo, our look. You'll see all the previous episodes. You'll see uh, under any episode, it tells you how to submit a photo. The idea is as, as you submit photos and I edit your photos using my style and look and some different ideas. So uh, not much more to it. I want to get right to it because uh, I want to keep your time in mind and I want to get through as many photos as I can. So let's. Uh, here's one I was going to get to last time. Um, as far as the photo goes, you know, the, the weather is the star of the photo, right? There's not much in the foreground. I'd have loved if there was a city here or palm trees or, or something to, to frame the weather, right? Where the weather is behind something, but we just kind of got this blah field here. So let's take advantage of the weather, top over into perfect effects. And interestingly enough, one of the presets under here down under urban is called caution. And uh, look what it does. I mean, it's it's like it just brings out the clouds, the lightning, and, and the added benefit is, is it almost silhouettes the foreground because we don't really care about this part. There's nothing going on there. Uh, and if you want to, you could go, it's got a color enhancer layer here, which you can see is what's desaturating it. And you could go kind of tweak the colors on there and adjust if you want to bring some of that color back. But that's before, that's after. Pretty darn cool for clicking on one filter and, and what it does for stormy skies. So, and appropriately, appropriately named as well. Let's click apply to get back to Lightroom. And you can see that's our before photo, that's our after photo. All right, moving on, got a, got a car photo here. Thought this is pretty representative, uh, at least of what I see. Um, you're either, unless it's your car, which by the way, my grandfather used to have one of these. He owned a painting business and, uh, and I used to paint with him and we used to actually ride around in one of these, it's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, okay, so all nostalgia behind us. Um, one of the common themes that I see is, is with photos like this is we can't control a lot of things. They can't control the background. I loved if, if there was more separation between the truck and the background, harsh light. I loved if this were sunrise or sunset, but um, you know, you could see the harsh shadow and then what happens is we get this really, really bright foreground. So if we can't control that stuff, then we wanna at least try to help as much as we can. And, and especially to me, the first thing that I would think of is we wanna, we wanna work on the pavement in the foreground to make it so it's not so bright. You could use the adjustment brush in Lightroom and just, brush the foreground, okay? Um, if you watch, I'm gonna go jump into perfect effects here. And uh, if you ever watch TV or um, TV or movies and you see people outside, you'll see a lot of times during the day, the pavement is wet. They wet it to take the brightness off of it because look at what happens when the pavement's not wet and you're in, you're in the middle of the day. Uh, the, the, it's extremely bright. So what we can do here is go to our filters to our adjustment brush and choose darken. Um, I'm doing this inside of Perfect Effects because you're going to see what comes next, and I think it's better than what we can do in Lightroom. I'm just going to brush. I'm going to brush on the grass and the ground here. I'm not going to be really picky about it. it. You can use Perfect Brush, and that'll really help outline because you can keep the brush, half of the brush in, half the brush out. Here, I'll try it really quick just to... And you can paint, and if I show you the mask, Commander Control M from mask. Uh, in fact, let's go to show mask view. Here's where the shortcut is. But if I show you, see, so you can see how it outlined that really well. So that'll work out really well. And you just might want to use a smaller brush and just really have to uh, uh, go in there and, uh, and paint that out. But I'm not going to spend too much time on it here, just in the interest of your time. So we're able to darken everything there. Hold down option or alt if you spilled over into an area you didn't want to and that'll erase it from that. So that looks good. We're gonna add a new layer. We're gonna go to dynamic contrast and uh, I'm gonna go to surreal. I'm actually gonna go higher than I normally go which is surreal. Here's the key. We don't have a great background. I understand you probably couldn't choose your background, but what we don't want to do is we do have a little bit of softness here from the lens that we use. There's a little bit of depth of field going. Um, we want to separate this truck as good as we can. All right, We can't separate it too much uh, because, again, I'm going to assume maybe the truck wasn't yours. You couldn't move it where you wanted to. So that's the background we had to deal with. But adding contrast to it, which we want to add to the truck because it looks awesome on the truck. It brings out the details, the chrome, everything. Adding that to it, it, it adds it to the background, and we don't want the background to be more contrasty. We want it to be as unobtrusive as possible. 
and it really gives a nice sheen to the ground here. And that's why I do it in Perfect Effects versus Lightroom, okay? Let's go ahead and add one more layer here. Uh, again, time of day, we couldn't control it. So let's go make this a little bit more warm just to try to give the an appearance that maybe it was taken at a warmer time of the day. So we'll go over here to the warmth slider um, under our sunshine filter. And then uh, we'll add one more filter just to finish things up here. And that is a vignette. The Big Softy had somebody ask, why do you keep using the Big Softy? Use some of the other ones. The other ones don't look as good. So the Big Softy is really my favorite. We'll pull it down a little. Hit apply to take us back to Lightroom. All right, let's take a look here. That's our before photo. And that is our after photo. Love the detail. I'm trying to point at my screen, but just that dynamic contrast, what it does to trucks and cars and vehicles. Uh, really cool stuff. All right, moving on to our next one here. We already saw that one. Let's go. Uh, let's go take a look at our next photo here, and we got a portrait. So overall, uh, a couple things I'd say is way overexposed, uh, too overexposed because even if I pull exposure down, I can't regain that. All right, it's gone, but way overexposed. So we're gonna pull that back. In fact, let me hit reset because I know that I already did some stuff to the photo. So way overexposed, we gotta pull that back. I'd have loved if she was pulled away from the background more to soften it even more, but um, I think expression is good. I always think expression is most important in a portrait. Um, kind of a cute pose. Uh, I'm gonna crop this. So uh, I'm gonna crop out a lot of the bottom part of the photo. Uh, say what you will, just my thought is better be safe than sorry. So let's just crop out the bottom part of the photo there. Um, Again, I wish you pulled a little bit away, but expression is, is good. You know, I always think like, would I want to give this photo to that person or their family and friends? And would they look at it and say, that's a great photo of them. You really captured their personality. And I don't know her, but um, I think it captures, it looks like it captures her nicely. Might take the adjustment brush, bring the exposure up a little bit here. That's probably too much. Just a pain in the face. So we'll pull it back a hair. Okay. Let's head up to the file menu. Plugin extras, I'm gonna to go to perfect layers first. I'm doing this because I wanna use multiple on one apps. And when I wanna do that, I have to go to layers first. So we're gonna go into perfect layers. And then I really don't need to do anything here. Let's just jump straight into portrait. And this is kind of funny because I think my computer senses that like I'm doing this in front of an audience because I practiced it before. I don't just do these like, you know, I try to run through it once. Um, and I practiced it before and everything looked good, but it appears it did not want to find the eye this time. So it knows I'm doing a video and it says, I'm going to mess with you. Um, the mouth had even found really good before, but we can tweak it. It just takes a second. So just to do some quick adjustments. Most of the time, the defaults are good. I never think they're too strong. I think she had pretty white eyes and teeth before. So I'm going to bring down both the, the brightness of the eyes and the teeth because I don't think we need to do that. Um, any more than we already have. Uh, it's done a nice job on the, the, if I hide the controls here, that's before, that's after, just smooth the skin a little bit. And uh, we might take our healing brush and just go in here and get rid of a couple of small blemishes. I, don't, I think a lot of these are birthmarks. We don't wanna, we don't wanna really get rid of everything, um, but just a couple of little blemishes here and there to smooth things out. Okay, uh, we can take our opacity down here too. And then, you know, if you ever want to just pop it on some of the other ones, that'll just lessen it. It's not doing the full effect from it. All right. Uh, but I'm not going to really do too much else here. Um, she's, she's obviously got a scar here. That's, you know, that's the kind of thing. When I take a picture of somebody, I usually ask them like, how would you like me to handle this? Uh, she obviously knows she's got a scar there. So you could take your healing brush again at a low opacity if you wanted to. And, um, you could take it and, and kind of just paint over that, see if it reduces it a little bit. But again, I usually ask the people because you don't want to offend them by, by removing something that they'll know that you removed. All right, let's uh, go jump over here into effects. And you got two options when it comes to a photo like this. All right, we can, it was overexposed. We can go with it, guys, all right? Go with it, go to like cinematic, um, you know, Blue Dawn, it's gonna, it's gonna brighten the photo and, and add some contrast and do a couple of things. Cyberpunk, you know, it's got a whole different type of a look or style to it, but uh, I'm gonna go down here, we can go uh, Havana. 
Havana is another one. So we, we've got a really bright photo. We can work with it. We can just go with it and say, you know what? I know it's overexposed. I'm going to go with it. Uh, if you go to Urban, uh, we go down here to Urban Sun. That's another one. Again, really bright photo. Let's go with it. I would probably paint. Uh, there's dynamic contrast here. I would probably paint that out of her face because we don't want to add contrast to her skin. But you can go with it if you want to take that direction from it. Uh, if you don't, then I would just go maybe try uh, maybe like a matte filter. You know, there's a lot of darkroom stuff that would look good on it. Uh, you can see all the different options here. But I think the matte filters, it's a, you know, the, all the social sharing apps have them in it. Um, you know, faded matte warm. Uh, there's a simple faded matte option. I actually kind of like the... Uh, the intense one too gives it a nice amount of contrast but still gives it almost that matte look to it so there's a couple of options for you for for how what your style is for this i i kind of like the matte look but i also i if, if it is overexposed sometimes i go with it and i make it really bright i go under the glow settings and you can kind of tweak that i would add a filter and because it's so bright on the edges i might try a vignette just to see if we can tone it down a little bit and it might look a little bit artificial because it, it's darkening there. But again, it's so bright on those edges, I, I, I'd probably want to add that to it. All right, hit apply. Now we're back in Lightroom. Let's go to the original photo. I'll hit reset. That's our before photo. There's our after. So before and then after. All right, uh, we'll finish up here one more. We got a landscape. Uh, first thing I would do to this is uh, let's do some cropping. Get these trees out of here. This is uh, Yosemite, gorgeous place. I was just there about a month or so ago. Get those trees out of there. Get as, get as much of the stuff over here. We can still keep L cap and everything um, in the photo. And then I don't think we need as much foreground as we had here. So uh, so great photo. Um, you know, love, love the clouds. Better time of day. Sunrise, sunset could have helped get us a little bit warmer. Taken, you know, the middle of the day, you have a lot of haze issues. We can deal with some of it if you go to the effects menu here in Lightroom. Uh, brand new in Lightroom CC is the dehaze slider looks great works great um, I think it does a nice job here sometimes it oversaturates and sometimes it gets a little bit banded and kind of noisy up in, in certain colored areas you'll actually see a line up there it's not too bad here but I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through what I do for my dehazing uh, while I, I first before I go anywhere I always do my highlights and shadows inside of Lightroom because I think it's got some of the better highlights and shadows controls we'll do our whites and blacks option or alt click Okay, so that'll help us with some of just the basic shadows and highlights. Then let's go to photo edit in perfect effects. I'm not going to go into any other app, so that's why I just go straight into perfect effects from the photo menu. And to me, the ultimate dehazer is dynamic contrast. Uh, we'll go natural. I am going to zoom in because I want you to be able to see what it's doing here. But it's, uh, it's, it's what I've always used for dehazing my photos because to me it gives a, a really... Um, it's just the detail and, and the, the sharpening and the contrast that you get from it. And I can control it. The small details, which is a lot of the stuff on here, large details are going to be your clouds. I'm not going to want to do that as much for this photo. Medium details will be everything in between. But all this stuff back here, I can attack with all the small detail sliders. Okay, So that's done a really good job at just removing the haze in the photo. That's before. That's after. And then if I were to finish it up, probably go over here down to my sunshine filters and uh, see if we can add a little bit of uh, maybe warm highlights, just kind of warm things up a little bit. Not doing too much. Another thing that I can do is go to the presets. I want to show you a little trick here. I'm going to go to landscape because that's where a lot of the good presets are. I like golden hour enhancer. If I click on Golden Hour Enhancer, it's going to get rid of dynamic contrast because that's the way presets work. It overwrites what's there. If I right click and choose Insert Preset, it'll stack it on top of the dynamic contrast so I can keep it. And now what I would do is take my, uh, my masking brush here, maybe at 50% opacity, and then just paint it out of the sky. Not a lot, just a 50% opacity just to get our blue back in there. Don't forget you could turn on your perfect brush and, uh, and that'll help make it happen a little bit along those edges there. I just, in the interest of time, I did it a little faster. And uh, let's see here, we'll finish this up, add one more new layer, go to our filter section here, go down to vignette, and I'll add the 
big softy of which it'll probably be a little bit too dark. We just reduce the opacity on it. All right. So that's before, that's after. Overall, I might reduce them as, as I look at it now, I might reduce the master opacity just because I think it got a little bit too warm and too contrasty there. So I can reduce the master opacity, which reduces everything here. Hit apply to go back to Lightroom. And now we will go to our before photo. I will hit reset. Okay, so that's our before photo. And there is our after. So to me, it holds a little bit more true to the color without like oversaturating the sky to make it that electric blue. Uh, but again, that's before and that is after. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out ononephotos.com. You can submit a photo. You can see all the other episodes. And uh, my name is Matt Laskowski. I'll talk to you next time.